of Guam, McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Coming up on Primetime, a 49-year-old man has been arrested in connection to a fatal shooting in Aganya Heights. Plus, a pair of police officers were injured this morning in a hit-and-run crash in Sinanya. And Naval Base Guam has been selected as a safe haven port for Navy vessels. Havadan, good evening, everyone. Topping our news tonight, the Guam Police Department has made an arrest in connection to Tuesday's fatal shooting in Aganya Heights. KUAM's Adriana Cotero reports. At this stage of the investigation, we've only identified uh, Mr. Mediola as a person of interest. Early this morning, Guam Police Department CID investigators arrested 49-year-old Anthony Gregory Mindiola. Mindiola is a resident of the home along Chalankenton Tatuhan Drive in Aganya Heights, where the fatal shooting occurred on Tuesday, and he was transported from the crime scene to GPD headquarters in Tizen. GPD spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapau. To the course of the investigation, and uh, you know, he was charged for the counts of reckless conduct, family violence, possession of a firearm, without a valid firearms identification, the use of a deadly weapon and commission of a felony, and unlawful transfer of a firearm. The man shot was identified by family members as Joey Mantanani Zamora. GPD has classified the case as a death investigation. It has not been determined whether foul play was involved. Sergeant Powell says a change in the classification is dependent upon the findings of an autopsy. This case is still open and our, our detectives uh, still continue to conduct follow-ups uh, within, within uh, you know, the area and of course the scene. GPD could not confirm if any other suspects were involved. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Two police officers were injured in a hit and run crush that occurred near GPD Central Precinct Command in Sinahanya this morning. Here's more on the two separate investigations that have been launched. Two separate investigations, one mission. We do have an a person of interest mm -hmm. that's been identified. Just before 1030 this morning, police didn't have to go far to respond to a hit and run. What had happened, our official vehicle that you see behind me was involved in an in, in a, in a, uh, auto crash. Police spokesperson Paul Tapao says in the parking lot of the Central Precinct Command in Sinanya, a man rammed his car into a police cruiser with two officers inside. They were treated by GFD medics on scene, and um, they've, you know, they're experiencing some pains and everything, but um, we're moving forward. Uh, we've identified a suspect vehicle that fled the scene. Um, you know, our, our officers with the adjoining precincts are assisting with this case to include GPD's SODs and um, our, our CID agents that are also working uh, with, within this time period. Two separate investigations being conducted. Highway Patrol investigating the hit and run, while detectives from the Criminal Investigation Division are investigating the incident as an aggravated assault. We are still trying to put everything together as to the, the, uh, the intent or the MO as to what uh, triggered this incident from happening. So sure. th there's a lot of things that we're still, like I said, this is this is the preliminary stage. This is pretty much the MTC stage. And, uh, you know, one thing about building the cases or understanding the cases is we have to piece everything together. So um, we're still at the beginning uh, portion of this investigation. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And in still more police news, GPD is asking for the public's self relative to a robbery at Buenos Market in Jonia Tuesday. Police say around 12.30 p.m., an unknown man entered the store and waited for customers to leave. He then proceeded behind the register counter, brandishing a knife, and demanded money from a store employee. Fearful for her safety, she immediately handed him an unknown, unknown amount of cash. The robber then fled on foot towards St. Francis Catholic Church. The store employee was unharmed. The suspect is described as a heavyset male, local, standing 5 foot 4. He was last seen wearing a long sleeve maroon shirt with white lettering, a dark hat, and a black mask. Anyone with information is asked to call GPD at 472-8911, and tips can also be submitted to guam.crimestoppersweb.com. Another person has tested positive for COVID-19. According to Public Health's updated situation report, the new case is a man between 30 to 39 years old who lives in northern Guam. The case tested positive through diagnostic laboratory services. The man did not have any contact to any cases. The current count of confirmed infections is 226, with five deaths, 174 recoveries, and 47 active cases. 
Meanwhile, community testing continued in Agania Heights today. Public Health Nursing Administrator Margarita Gay says because of an uptick in cases, more people came out to the testing the site. To the last uh, testing for this week, and it's centralized. It's uh, and uh, you know there's a lot of businesses, a lot of residents that are able to reach this area. And I think they're very concerned too because we had, a, as you noticed, uh, we had a, an increase in our uh, confirmed positives and the, the word, you know, the news that they hear that they went different areas, different places. And so everyone's kind of like, did I, you know, did I go there? Was he around there? You know, so they, I think they're a little bit more concerned. Testing will be held tomorrow in Jonia in the parking lot between St. Francis Catholic Church and School. The testing is from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, we stress you do not have to have symptoms to get tested. There is no word on if there will be another expanded testing opportunity. The Nimitz Carrier Strike Group arrived today for a scheduled port visit. Along with the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz, the guided missile cruisers USS Princeton and USS Ticonderoga and guided missile destroyers USS Sterrett and Ralph Johnson are also in port at Naval Base Guam. The Navy says due to COVID-19 precautions, personnel on Liberty will be limited to a safe haven area within the pier and designated beach area. While they will be able to take part in recreation and morale activities, they won't be able to interact with any base personnel or anyone who is not part of the ship's crew. The Navy would not say how long the ships will be here, citing operational security. Meanwhile, we might be getting a lot more of these port visits. According to Military.com, the naval base Guam has been selected as a safe haven port in the Indo-Pacific, where ships can pull into port and sailors can enjoy free time without a high risk of bringing COVID back onto the vessel. The 7th Fleet Command Ship, the USS Blue Ridge, pulled into Guam June 11th, also for a safe haven liberty. According to the Navy, this type of port visit is designed to provide necessary mental and physical relaxation that the crew needs in order to better perform their jobs. It helps boost crew morale, readiness and effectiveness. Public Health is standing up a new epidemiology laboratory that will enable it to better handle unexpected spikes in viral infections like the recent cluster of COVID-19 positive airmen at the Reef Hotel. The federal funding for the lab was discussed during a budget hearing today for DPHSS. Oversight Chair Senator Therese Terlahi asked Public Health Director Linda DeNorsi about how quick they'll be able to respond. I'm hoping it means within a couple days at the most to... Yes to lock down whatever we need to, to make sure that we, the public, can be informed of, of what they need to know. Yes, we have everything in our plan, okay. and I'll be happy to share that with you as well. All right. That itemizes how many people for each of our branches within you, the Department you, of Public Health. When do you expect that to be approved or implemented then? Uh, right away, actually, we have all these funding, so we're already um, moving forward with uh, the recruitments of these people. DeNorsi says they are hiring 42 new registered nurses and nurse aides. Also during the public hearing, Public Health discussed a $6.4 million federal grant program for local daycare centers. An implementation plan is currently being reviewed by the Attorney General's office. There are stringent uh, federal requirements that are needed, and so the, a the AG wanted to ensure that these regulations are clearly specified to the subrecipients, and also the reporting requirements are clearly specified. Once finalized, Public Health will make an announcement explaining how daycare centers can apply for the grants. grants. Don't disconnect delinquent power and water customers. That was Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's plea in letters late yesterday to the public utility agencies. GPA and GWA announced that they would be cutting off service for non-payment beginning July 1st. But the governor is urging them to wait until a majority of unemployment benefits are paid to cash-strapped residents. In response, CCU member Simon Sanchez said there won't be any disconnections unless a ratepayer decides not to negotiate a payment plan in July. During a CCU meeting last night, it was announced that more than 100 payment plans have already been negotiated. Guam Delegate Michael Sinicholas remains mum on the U.S. House Ethics Investigative Subcommittee probe against him, but a top Democratic Party leader here weighed in today on the containing COVID multimedia show. 
the ideal situation would be that, you know, all of this is just a, a, a bad dream. Public pressure is mounting Delegate Michael Sinekles off island and largely silent on the U.S. House Ethics Investigative Subcommittee probe. Democratic Party of Guam Chair Sarah Thomas Nedadoc. It's truly unfortunate that we've even gotten to this level. There's, you know, that's very clear for all of us, not just uh, those of us that are Democrats, but, you know, our people at Guam. Like others, she's also waiting for him to come back home. We're certainly inviting him home and hoping that he's going to, uh, you know, meet with the people of Guam and, and talk about what's going on over there. I mean, he's far away and hard to get to. She says the process could take months and hopes that Nicholas returns her calls by then. If it continues to proceed in the direction that it is, then obviously the party's not going to have uh, any other uh, choice but to, you know, push someone uh, else to run against him. She's concerned about the future of the party and the island in D.C. I would not at this moment throw him out. I will say we're going to give it a few more days and see what see what it takes us, you know. For Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. During these uncertain times, it's important to remember that we are in this together. The Cowles Insurance Team has continued to service the needs of our customers. As in the past 80 years, you can count on us to be here when you need us most, when it comes to your health and the health of your family. Let's continue making the right choices by staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy. We are all in this together, and together we will rise again. Off the day, I'm Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, and I'm proud to be co-hosting the Guam Island Pride Beautification Event with the Islandwide Beautification Task Force and the Guam Visitors Bureau. I'm hoping that we can count on every resident and business to join us on Saturday, June 27th, as we clean up our streets, parks, and villages, and spruce up our homes and businesses. It's time to get up and move to improve our island for each other. As Guam prepares for the reopening of our tourism economy, let's come together to ensure its success. Go to guamvisitorsbureau.com to learn how you can participate. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. For the safety of our customers and our associates, we wipe down our areas uh, and continuously we wipe down it after each customer. For safe social distancing, we also added six feet space markers. KUAM News. Winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. USDA food commodities will be available through the Department of Education on Thursday. Superintendent John Fernandez tells KUM's co Containing COVID multimedia show that the commodities will be distributed over the next three Thursdays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Tizan Baseball Field and the Dededo Farmers Market. He also said his staff was able to find ways to expand the program so more people can get food assistance. We were supposed to revert back to our more limited program 
Uh, but the staff were really uh, creative and, and uh, resourceful over the last week because we, we realized that, you know, with the employment be- unemployment benefits just starting to, to, to come in, uh, there are many families there that still are going to be needing uh, significant support. So we worked with our USDA office to, to work on a, um, uh, looking at our eligibility of, of, um, framework for, for families to be able to take advantage of the commodities. And we raised it from 150% of poverty to mm-hmm. 400%. Of, of poverty, and, and that's similar to to other states, including Alaska and some states on the West Coast as well. So we got the approval to do that, and this will help us, you know, be able to expand our supports for families who are who need that food support. Fernanda said the heads of households should bring an ID. Each will be able to get one bag of commodities and one box of fresh fruit from the USDA's Farm to Families program. Meanwhile, GDOE's grab-and-go school meal distribution at Weddingell Elementary is closed for the rest of the week because of an electrical issue. GPA is working on the issue, and the f- food assistance program at the Dededo campus is expected to resume on Monday. Residents who normally go there for meals are urged to visit the other distribution sites. And Guam Department of Education's Deputy Superintendent Joe Sanchez says was the guest speaker at the Mayor's Council of Guam's special monthly meeting. Sanchez explained the three instructional proposals for the upcoming school year that are up for discussion and also detailed plans for opening the schools at night, allowing for parents and students internet access. We know that there are going to be a number of families who may want to access the internet, who may want to access uh, devices that they just don't have at home. So opening the community uh, learning centers in the schools in every village, or as many villages as, as we can, uh, will allow them to go to the school and utilize the computers and, and access the Wi-Fi signal. Sanchez says opening centers were always an idea, but the department never had the necessary funding. Sanchez additionally offered a supplement to the idea. What we call community hotspots. So for example, a facility like this, if students are not able to go to the school, we can set up a number of computers, either five to ten computers in the mayor's offices or, or village community center or whatever facility you have and put the Wi-Fi signal there. So, GDOE will be sending out a survey to all the village mayors to determine the locations of the community centers. The Guahan Academy Charter School has received accreditation by Cognia. That's a nonprofit organization that provides quality assurance for schools, school districts, and education service providers. This means that GAX is fully accredited and is recognized across the nation as a school that meets Cognia standards of quality and maintains a commitment to continuous improvement. The CNMI House Special Committee on Federal Assistance and Disaster-Related Funding is reviewing hundreds of documents from the Taurus administration regarding COVID-19 disaster payments. With more from Saipan, here's Tomas Monglonia. CNMI Secretary of Finance David Atalig responding to a House Special Committee review of hundreds of documents related to COVID-19 spending. I'm confident that uh, we've done our due diligence I'm confident that we've done um, procurement based on the emergency regulations. Officials remain at odds on the issue of cabinet member pay. Secretary, I wanted to respectfully ask if you yourself have received any overtime, supplemental, or what's being called COVID-19 pay. Uh, No, I have not received any overtime. Um, I did submit my overtime or my hours work during COVID-19. And so there is records of me submitting um, the cost of my time. Atalig explained that all workers, including the cabinet, signed a Category B form, which he says is required by FEMA for reimbursement, including the reason for COVID-19 work. He says more review needs to be done in order for finance to make any payments. Cabinet members and some directors were paid, uh, they were paid additional, additional time in terms of their their pay during the COVID, they were paid one to one. No cabinet members would, um, received you know, 1.5 or as people are alluding to at times with uh, how things were done at YouTube, 2.5. So nothing was uh, paid. Um, we only paid straight time. Um, and most of the time, straight time after they've uh, um, worked over 80 hours. 
Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios also weighing in as the administration seeks guidance. Whether or not those those processes uh, uh, will hold water uh, is still a question. And so as far as the COVID, I'm, 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 I'm assured by, by the Secretary of Finance that no overtime pay has been uh, paid out. Tomas Manglotnia for KUAM News on Saipan. And coming up, we continue to celebrate the graduates of 2020. You're watching KUM. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. For the safety of our customers and our associates, we wipe down our areas uh, and continuously we wipe down it after each customer. For safe social distancing, we also added six feet space markers. way to beat a box of cheesy, crunchy, fully loaded nachos is more nachos. It's Taco Bell's Nachos Cravings Pack. Order ahead and pick up yours at our contactless drive through We've asked the world to give us a moment to collect ourselves and heal. Well, the time has come to pick ourselves up and thrive again. Let's take one last moment as an island community to clean up and beautify our home for ourselves and before we welcome visitors to our shores. Our island needs so much care, and it's amazing what we can do when we work together. Join us on June 27th for the Guam Island Pride Beautification event. It'll be a Guam moment we can all be proud of. Visit GuamVisitorsBureau.com for details or to volunteer. Half a day, the Census of Guam effort has resumed, so let's all take the time to respond. We count in federal funds in times of need and so much more. Please do your part so we can continue to receive this help. Call the number on your notice of visit to schedule an interview on the phone, in person, at home, or at your village census center. We only get this chance every 10 years, so let's come together and shape our future. We didn't set out to make a hit. Sing our song. Cause my baby's got a lot. So let me testify. Real bourbon, no apologies. Let me testify. Wild turkey. It'll find you.
Welcome back, everyone. We continue to show our support to the entire class of 2020 in a special user-generated segment with submissions from their loved ones. Head of the Class 2020 is brought to you by Guam Community College and ABC Stores. Today, we're starting with Kiana Jo Rios Camacho, graduating from JFK High School. Congratulations, KJ. We are so proud of you. This is only the beginning. Keep paving your way to a successful life and don't stop even if you've reached the top. Remember, the road to success is never ending. We love you, Dad, Mom, and the family. Craig Cole Vegafria, graduating from Southern High School, we wish you all the best and many more blessings to come. Love your family. Kameo Tova is graduating from Simon Sanchez High School. Congratulations! We are so blessed and so proud of all you have accomplished. Keep up the great work. This is not the end, this is just the beginning. Keep reaching for your goals and we support you. We love you. Cameron Tovez, also graduating from Simon Sanchez. Congratulations, Cameron. We are so blessed and proud of you for what you have accomplished throughout the years. Keep up the great work and continue reaching for your goals. Also congratulating Jaden Santos from GW High School. Congratulations, my first love. Mommy loves you. Alana Salas, graduating from GW as well, will be attending the University of Hawaii. Congratulations to my sister from her favorite sister. Our family is so proud of you. We love you. From her sister, Jolene Cruz. And last but not least, graduating from Untalan Middle School and moving on up to high school, Tavia Sophia Underwood. Congratulations! You're leaving Untalan Middle School and headed for high school. Four years will go by quickly. Enjoy each moment and be strong. We love you, Nina Sophia, Auntie Christine, Gus, and your entire loving family. And that is your head of the class 2024 today. As always, it's brought to you by Guam Community College and ABC stores. You can watch more submissions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on KOM News. And coming up, your birthday shout outs. Don't go away. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. King's Restaurants are still cooking up your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner plates and have them available for carryout and delivery. Call them in Tamuning at 647-5464 or in Dedido at 637-5464 and order for carryout. For delivery, please download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get King's delivered to your door. Be safe and stay healthy until we see each other again at King's. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. The only way to beat a box of cheesy, crunchy, fully loaded nachos is more nachos. It's Taco Bell's Nachos Cravings Pack. 
Order ahead and pick up yours at our contactless drive through And this just into our newsroom. Public Health has released a list of 30 establishments where the airmen from the Guam Reef Hotel who tested positive went to. Most are in Tumont, but they also patronize restaurants in Talafofo, Agate, and Santa Rita. Eleven on the list were dine-in restaurants. The rest were takeout and convenience store stops. For a complete list, check the KUM website and our social media sites. Public Health is asking people who have frequented these establishments from June 4th through the 14th to monitor their health. Public Health will announce a testing site and date for next week. Individuals can also be tested at their doctor's office. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. And happy birthday to John Hook Anthony Santos. And remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KOM.com and make sure you uh, include your birth date, photo, and your name. And that'll do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everyone. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Half a day, everyone. Nestor Lecanto here for another segment of In 